Hey everyone, welcome back. Two stories from Eric Berger with Ars Technica at the end of the week further highlight the long gaps between Artemis missions right at the five-year anniversary of the rebranding. It's further evidence that the two halves that Artemis currently has don't make a whole. As I've been noting, right now SLS and Orion can go to the moon, but there's not enough hardware to fly often. And right now Starship is flying prototypes, but it could be years before it's ready to go to the moon. The first story reported that Boeing is downsizing its SLS workforce due to external factors. According to the story, NASA has reduced funding to Boeing, which is the prime contractor for the SLS stages element. With less money, Boeing may reassign people to other company programs outside of SLS instead of letting them go, but either way, it's a reduction in the workforce working on SLS for Boeing. We are still waiting for comments from NASA on these cuts and workforce reductions, but presumably the space agency doesn't need or can't afford to build more SLS vehicles. As the current Artemis manifest stands, a maximum of three more missions would take place in this decade, and with the potential for more budget caps and budget cuts in fiscal year 2025, there could be more delays. The Artemis II core stage is basically complete, and the unit for Artemis III is probably about halfway through production, so Boeing would need to finish the rest of the third core stage and the fourth in the next four years. Although NASA announced the delays to Artemis II and III in January, they have not yet provided any details on how that changes the contract milestones for, in this case, the SLS core stage. One of the many questions that comes up based on this action is whether the budget cuts will further affect production milestones and the delivery date for Core Stage 3 that would fly Artemis 3, whenever that is. Artemis 4 introduces the Exploration Upper Stage and the Block 1B vehicle. Although that is still in development, that workforce was also expected to see reductions. The impact of these cuts on assembly and test of the first EUS units for Artemis 4 and beyond is also unclear. Another question is whether there are more cuts and workforce reductions to come, either inside or outside of the SLS program. We haven't heard about a slowdown in Orion production, so the question is, is NASA continuing to build Orion spacecraft for Artemis 4 and 5 when those missions might not fly for five years or more? Possibly not until the next decade. Orion is operating under a different contract and a different set of variables than SLS, but without any clarification about how these cuts fit into a broader change of plans, that's one of the many questions this action raises about the future. The second story talks about another what-if internal exercise that NASA was conducting, given the indications that other Artemis programs and capabilities will be delayed, and there could be another gap in missions after Artemis II. This wouldn't be a surprise given delays to Starship development and shortages of SLS hardware. SpaceX is developing the Starship system, and NASA contracted a variant for HLS Option A. Although three flight tests have already been flown, Starship is very ambitious and like the other programs is also behind schedule. The Artemis 3 delay announced in January moved the target from the end of 2025 to September of 2026. As noted in a previous video, NASA's recently released baseline commitment for HLS Option A was that Starship would be ready and waiting for Artemis 3 in cislunar space in February of 2028. So in an alternative mission concept described in the story, Orion and SLS would perform a rendezvous and docking mission with a Starship HLS vehicle in Earth orbit. The theory being that would reduce the number of milestones for Starship HLS to something more achievable by presumably the 2027 timeframe where Artemis 3 is currently planned. This is basically a study, and we see these ideas conceptualized inside and outside the agency all the time. They don't cost much money to do, and also don't cost much money to discard, so that's worth keeping in perspective. NASA isn't doing this or spending money on this yet, they're just considering their options. Still, this is an interesting what-if exercise, even if the space agency doesn't seem willing to discuss it in public. 
According to the story, the Starship HLS spacecraft for this alternate mission would still need to be crew rated, and there's very little information about how development of crew and life support systems work is progressing. The baseline commitment from NASA around New Year's means that the HLS variant of Starship has moved into Phase C of the NASA life cycle, but that means it has not yet reached its critical design review. Setting those uncertainties aside, flying a mission with Apollo 9-style objectives would include not just an initial rendezvous and docking of Orion and Starship, but also would involve two of the crew members transferring to Starship, undocking the two spacecraft, and then separating out to a great enough distance to allow a demonstration of Starship's ability to perform a rendezvous and docking with Orion. The alternative mission concept described in the story also refers to saving the third and final interim cryogenic propulsion stage, or ICPS for short, for a later lunar landing mission where it would be needed. As noted in the recent video on the last Delta IV launch early in April, the ICPS is a close derivative of the second stage of the now-retired United Launch Alliance launch vehicle. The two ICPS units in storage at a ULA Cape Canaveral facility will be the final two pieces of Delta hardware to fly. So the last one would be set aside for this study concept and Orion would launch on an SLS Block 1 vehicle with just the boosters and core stage. For this concept, an ICPS simulator would be needed to retain the SLS Block 1 outer mold line and height. Changing either the length or outer mold line of the vehicle would be showstoppers just based on the cost. It would basically be a different vehicle and would require time-consuming and expensive modifications and development work, not just to SLS but also to the mobile launcher. A piece of hardware with the mass and outer mold line characteristics as ICPS and perhaps just the characteristics of the ICPS LH2 tank and flanges would be much cheaper to procure. The SLS boosters and core stage are currently used to insert Orion and a fully fueled ICPS into a suborbital but high energy orbit. For Artemis II at main engine cutoff and orbital insertion, Orion, ICPS, and an empty core stage will be in an orbit of about 2200 kilometers by 30 kilometers. On Artemis 1, that only required ICPS to add about 40 meters per second of velocity to raise the perigee to an orbital altitude. In this mission concept, Orion would separate from the rest of the vehicle rather than ICPS separating from the core stage and LVSA. So Orion would also leave its own spacecraft adapter cone and the Orion stage adapter behind, attached to the core stage, LVSA, and ICPS simulator. It would then need to raise its perigee and start the rendezvous with Starship. NASA studying this alternative is another indication that the February 2028 schedule for Starship HLS in the still recent agency baseline commitment is more realistic than the September 2026 target launch date. The Starship system has several capabilities in development. One of the critical ones for HLS is large-scale propellant transfer from one starship to another in Earth orbit. Back in January, the first flight demonstration for that was said to be late this year or early next, but now SpaceX is just saying next year. The HLS critical design review was projected for August 2025, and that is not expected to be complete until after the propellant transfer demonstration objectives are all completed. Another downside to this Orion Starship LEO mission is that it would use up scarce SLS flight hardware. This mission concept would save that third and final ICPS unit, but it would consume everything else in an SLS launch vehicle set, including an extra set of SLS boosters and a core stage. And NASA just slowed down production of the core stages, as was reported in the first story. So this alternative would use up the little inventory available. If NASA is delaying delivery dates for the 5th, 6th, and beyond SLS vehicles, flying this LEO mission would mean the 5th core stage would have to support Artemis IV. And if production is slowing down, is that production rate high enough to deliver a 5th unit by the time Artemis IV needs it? Or would this be signaling another delay to Artemis IV? 
This concept would also consume the final set of already built Block 1 stage adapters that connect the SLS stages and connect Orion to SLS. Those are currently assigned to Artemis 3, but use of them for an alternate mission would require building another set for that ICPS unit that was saved. That would be much less expensive than another working ICPS unit, but still might be hard to justify if this new round of austerity measures from Congress continues. The only other option mentioned in the story was a more obvious one given the hardware and contracts in place, a mission for Orion to dock to the Gateway in near rectilinear halo orbit, or NRHO for short. The issue with this option is that the Gateway launch could be delayed until late 2027. The previous Gateway launch date was October 2025, but NASA announced that there would be a delay without announcing a new target date. The agency did just release its baseline commitment for that initial Gateway capability, and it doesn't project launch until December 2027. It will take a year for the initial Gateway elements, the power and propulsion element and the habitation and logistics module, to reach NRHO together. So it's likely that the soonest this alternative could fly is 2028, and it may be closer to 2029. That suggests that there may not be a feasible mission for Artemis to fly in 2026 or 2027 unless this scaled-back Starship HLS proposal is ready to fly just to Earth orbit by then. Otherwise, the only other option would be for Orion to fly another standalone mission like Artemis 2. However, given what we're seeing with the budget cuts, waiting for either HLS or Gateway might be a more preferable option. If waiting were to be a better choice, another way of looking at this is just that Artemis 3 will be delayed again and is more realistic in 2028. The recent delays mean that there will now be three years between Artemis 1 and Artemis 2, and it would be another three years between Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 if Artemis 3 were to slip to 2028. Thanks for watching. These latest developments are new, and as I've gone over here a little bit, there are plenty of questions about them. It might take a long time, but we'll see what NASA is willing to say about the SLS workforce reduction. And we'll also have to see whether this conceptual study goes anywhere or we never hear about it again. In the meantime, NASA leadership in the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate and Moon to Mars Program Office are scheduled to provide an update to the NASA Advisory Council on Friday, April 26th.